All right, so today I'm going to do the 2.5 and 2.6 notes. This is called the power rule, which is a shortcut to all the long stuff we did for the definition of a derivative. And after you see this, you're probably going to be upset that we didn't just go straight to this because it's pretty simple. Now, there are some rules for things that are not uh, just power rules, like this says the derivative of any constant. Now, the way a derivative can be written, which uh, I wish we'd add in here a little better might be, this is the derivative of C with respect to X. Now, C is a constant. So this could be written as D, 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 X of like the number five. Five is a constant number. So when you do the derivative of any number, you get zero. The slope of any number is zero. And that's because, remember that the derivative is slope, and if you graph the line y equals 5, if I went up to 5 and I graph the line y equals 5, that's a horizontal line. I hope we all know that slope is 0. That's why that works. On this graph, we want the derivative of x. The derivative of x is 1, and it goes along with the power rule. So I'm going to hit the power rule first, and then I'm going to go back to this, and I'm also going to talk about if I graph the line y equals x, that would be a graph going through the origin with a slope of what? Rise one, run one, slope of one. That's another reason that's one. But the power rule says, if you have x to any power and you're taking a derivative of x to the power with respect to the x, you take the power and you move the power to in front of the x. So you see that n has come to the front. And since that n has come to the front, then you take the old power and you're going to subtract one from that. So we are going to do some rules for finding this. And, and by the way, because f of x equals this, another way to write derivative is f prime of x. There are going to be several ways we see how to write derivative, and you have to know them all. So we're going to do this first problem that says f of x equals 5x. Well, to get the derivative, we are going to say... Take the 5, move it to the front. Then you take 5 minus 1 and you get the new power. There's your derivative. Now this kind's a little tricky because we don't have a radical rule, so you must know the rule for radicals. So the radical rule is if you have x to the n power, and let's say you got the r root of this, you're supposed to know that whatever the power is inside with the n is a, can be written as a numerator. And whatever the root is out here can be written underneath like this. So this is x to the n over r power. We learned that before. So the first thing you have to do is rewrite this in the rational exponent form. So the 3 goes on top and a 4 goes on bottom. So when we do g, g prime of x, we're going to take the 3 fourths and move it to the front. And then we have x. And then we have to take 3 fourths minus 1. Well, 3 fourths minus 1 getting a common denominator is minus 4 fourths. So this would be negative 1 fourth. Now, in this class, it's okay to leave this as your answer. But we also need to realize that a negative exponent, whenever you have a negative exponent, that we can move that where that is in the fraction to make it a positive exponent. So this is in the numerator. I can move this to the denominator and just stick the one on top. There's a one here in front. That one goes there. And you can move this down and change the sign of the power. So that means we could take this three. Okay, so if you've not seen Evan Cooper's email, please take a look and see if that has... And we could write that negative one-fourth down to the bottom and like this. And so we could put that back into part. radical form. If you would at this time, uh, please move your car somewhere else. So, the reason I'm telling you all these different ways is because this will be a multiple choice question. They could answer that multiple choice question in any one of these three methods. So you have to be able to manipulate your rules for powers and radicals in order to get the right answer. Okay, so this goes along with what I was talking about right here. We don't have a fraction derivative yet but we can move this three up to the top with the one and go backwards from this. And we can write this as X to the negative three power. That way we don't have a fraction. So when I do the derivative of Y, 
Now, what, by the way, there's, this is another way to write this. I can put y prime as a derivative, or I could write dy dx. All of these mean the same thing. And I'm going to take that negative 3, I'm going to move it to the front, and then i got to subtract 1 from negative 3, which is negative 4. They might write the answer like that. That's a possibility. They may put a positive exponent, so they might move that down and put negative 3 over x to the fourth. So again, you got to know how to manipulate these things. Coming on down here to these, it says uh, the constant multiple rule. So if you got some c in front of some function, you do the derivative of the function just like always, and then you leave your, your constant, the number, the coefficient in front. So when I have a problem like this, I'm going to get y equals 2. And now I'm going to have times, and I take that set, and I should put y prime, my bad, because I'm doing derivative, y prime, leave the 2 there, bring the 7 to the front, and lower the power by 1, and then we're going to get the derivative is 14x to the 6. You would multiply 2 times 7. And again, y prime would work, or I could have written it as dy dx. They mean the same thing. What this means is the derivative of y with respect to x equals this. So these all mean the same. Over here, I want to bring the x squared, the x squared up to the top again. And I'm going to move it up by changing the 2 to a negative 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and now do the derivative of g. And you must write this symbol g prime of x. You can't just put equal. you got to tell me what it is. Now there is a shortcut here, like over here I could have just taken 7 times 2 and got 14 right away, so I'm going to do that here. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and I lower the power by 1, and again, that's fine for an answer, but sometimes they want positive exponents, so you would have to move that uh, x to the negative 3 to the bottom. Again, we have the rational exponent, and we got an a, so you need to know there's a 1 in front of this. So I'm going to write a coefficient of 1 eighth. I'm going to move the 8 out under that 1. And then I'm going to leave, put this uh, x to the, I think that's a 5. I'm going to look on the paper because my eyes don't work and I'll have my glasses on. So give me a sec. Yeah, 5. So I got x to the 5 sixth here. So I got to change it from a radical into a rational exponent. So then I'm going to have 1 8 times 5 6, which 5 times 1 is 5. 6 times 8 is 48. Now I'm going to have x, and I've got to take minus 6 6, so that'd be negative 1 6. So here it is. Again, that could be the answer, or they could move that one, x to the 1 6 down with the 48. And write it like this. Okay, we got more pages to do here. Okay, over here we're going to do the same. We want to find the derivatives of these. Now these one wanted you to try them on your own, but again, I am thinking about this as 3a times x2 to the fourth. So that's going to give me I'm going to write this separate because I want to simplify this because they will simplify this on the AP test. I lowered that power by 1, and this 8 and this 4 reduce. So the final answer they would have on the AP test for the multiple choice would be this. And I did not put the Y prime there, and you got to yell at me if I leave that off. Coming over here, I'm going to write it a different way just because we got to know what they all look like. Uh, that power is a 4, so you got to take everything in there to the 4th power. So 3 to the 4th is 81, x to the 4th, and I'm going to move the 8 out under the 81. And I lied. This is, I'm going to put this back up here on the top because I haven't done the derivative yet. I'm just simplifying this. So this is 81x to the 4th over 8. Then I'm going to take the 4 to the front. Lower the power, and then again, I would reduce these two. So this would be 81 halves x to the third. And you could put the x to the third up with the 81, but this would be your derivative. Coming over here, we want to move this up to the front, up to the top, not to the bottom. So since it's x squared, we've got to make it 9 sevenths times x to the negative 2. So when I do the derivative, I'll call it y prime. 
I'm going to take negative 2. I know two, negative 2 and 7 doesn't reduce. I'm like that 4 and 8. So negative 2 times 9 is negative 18 over 7. And I subtract 1 from the power. And that's going to end up equaling negative 18 over 7x cubed. And again, either one of these are OK, but they usually go positive exponents. So this last one, we're going to have to do a couple steps before we do a derivative. We have to square 7x, which would be 49x squared. And since that x squared is in the bottom, we would have to have 949. So move that x squared up with a negative 2. And now we can do the derivative. And I think you should practice writing dy dx sometimes and other times y prime. And so when we do this, neg 2 and 49 won't reduce. So this would be negative 2 times 9 is negative 18 over 49. And I subtract 1 from negative 2 is negative 3. And again, you may have to put that on the bottom for the multiple choice. So this is your derivative. That was a derivative. And this one. Okay, down here sometimes you got some indifference problems. This first one is one that a lot of kids struggle with. You have a monomial on the bottom, meaning one term. Whenever you have one term on the bottom, the first thing you want to do is split that whole thing up. I hope you all know that if you have a one fifth plus two fifths, that that equals one plus two all over five, right? Three fifths. Well. I can take these two things and go backwards and split these up. So this, can't tell if that's a square or a cube. I think it's a cube. So I'm going to write this as x cubed over x minus 4x over x plus 5 over x. Just like this thing, I can come back and split all those numerators up over the common denominator. Then I need to simplify those. So this will be x squared minus 4 plus 5 over x. But to do a derivative, you don't want an x in the bottom. So we're going to move that up to the top. OK? So I have, this is still f of x right here. I have not done any derivative. I've just simplified. So now when I do the derivative of f of x, which we call f prime of x or first derivative of x, I take my 2 to the front, lower the power by 1. This is a constant. It's 0. You don't have to do this plus 0. And then when I do this one, I take negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And that ends up with 2x minus 5 over x halves. And that is going to be our derivative right here. Now here, we're going to have to FOIL first. Because we don't, we don't know the rules. There is a rule coming up later called product rule, but we don't know that yet. So we're going to FOIL this thing. So this is going to equal x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. 1 times x is 1x. And 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And now I can do the derivative of each part. So I'm going to get... 3x squared, take the 3, and there's a 1 here, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6x. 1 times 1 is 1, and when you subtract 1 from 1, that's x to the 0 power, which is just 1, and the derivative of any constant is 0, so we don't even worry about constants. So this is my answer right here. Again, I got to take this thing over here, and that's a cubic. So we got to have a flashback to some old cubes. This is Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle has ones going down each path, and the two numbers in front had to go together to get the number between them. One, I get another one here. One plus two is three. Two plus one is three. Put another one out here. If I go again, I put a 1 here. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. Put another one here. And you can continue that on forever. This is Pascal's triangle. These are coefficients for each term. So this is x to the 0 power is 1. Whenever you have an x to the first power, 
It's just coefficients of one in front of everything. X squared, you remember doing binomial squares? Square the first, so it's one of that, and then it's two times those, those two things, and then one of these, and then this is the X cubed one right here. So this is the one that we are worried about on this problem because this is a three right there. So I'm gonna get the X to the fourth one out of the way. So here's what you do on these problems. You take this coefficient of one, and this is still f of x, I'm simplifying this. I put that one in front, then I take this x power, the first term to that third power, and I take this second term to the zero power. Now I won't do this normally because anything to the zero power is one, so I usually leave that off and I'm showing you the steps. Then you put a plus, there's a three here. So we put a, that three goes right there. This three comes here. Then I take that first term, the first time it was x cubed, so now I lower that power by one, and that's x squared. And then you take the next number whose power was zero, and its number was zero, but it goes up one, so this is to the first power. And this is, the x's are gonna go three, two, one, zero, and the, and the negative threes are gonna go zero, one, two, three. So we're gonna keep going, we got another one, and this three is the next coefficient. So we put that three in front. We take that first term x, and we lower that power, it's a, it's a two here, so now it becomes a one, and the negative three was a one, so now it becomes a two. And if you notice, if you add the exponents up, they always add up to whatever this power is right here. So since that power is three, three and zero is three, two and one is three, one and two is three. We got one more to go. My coefficient of the last one's a one, and I lower this x power again, and I normally will not write x to the zero, because that is one, and then I got negative three to the third. Now I've got to do some simplifying. So this is one, this is one, this is x cubed. So I got x cubed in front. Negative three times three, that is minus nine x squared. And over here, negative three squared is nine, and nine times three is 27 x. And then these two are ones, and then negative three to the third is negative 27. So that right there is f of x. That is that binomial cubed. So now I can do the derivative of this. So f prime of x is going to equal, I take three times one, lower the three to two. I go to the next one, two times negative nine. I lower the power, two minus one is one. I take one times 27. I lower the power of one to zero, so that's gone. And this is zero, we don't worry about it. So there's my derivative. And the very last problem. Again, you have a monomial down here, just like we had a monomial here. So we need to rewrite, we need to rewrite this with all the numerators over the common, the common denominator, but I'm not gonna use x square root of x. I'm gonna rewrite it as x to the half. So that number is x squared. So I've got two, and then I've got an x squared over x to the half. I got minus three x over x to the half. Now I hope you all remember that if you have x to the seventh over x cubed, that you subtract the exponent. So this would be x to the fourth. So I got to take two minus a half. Well, two minus a half is one and a half or three halves. So this will be two x to the three halves. And one minus a half is a half, so this is minus three x to the half. And again, I wanna tell you, I have not done a derivative yet, I have just simplified g of x. But now that I've got it looking like this, I can do the derivative. So g prime of x is going to equal two times three halves x to the one half. Now how I get this one half is I always look at my denominator and I know minus one means two halves, so two over two. Three over two minus two over two is a half. Then I got minus three, and I bring my one half to the front with that, and then one half minus two halves is negative one half. And so I can reduce this two with this two, so I'm gonna end up with three x to the one half, minus, over here, I'm gonna have three halves, x to the negative one half. Now, 
I can rewrite this in other ways. This could be the answer, it could be fine, or they might put this back in a radical. They, would, they could put this x to the negative half down here with the two. I'm not really sure how they're gonna do it. This could be the right answer. Or they could even simplify that denominator with x to the half and rewrite this as two over the square root of x. It is even possible that they could get common denominators and keep going from there. But all of these, any one of these three answers right here, the, even this top one, they're all the derivatives. But you want to practice simplifying because they're going to be multiple choice questions that you have to do.